Leaders in government and tech want to rewrite a law that shapes the internet. It is clear that Section 230 in its current form is no longer working. This law needs to be updated so that it continues to work well. I think that Congress should update the law to make sure that it's working as intended. Section 230 is a law that governs who's liable for what people post on social media. But some critics say it lets platforms censor users or spread harmful information and should be rewritten. Most everyone agrees that it's time to review Section 230, but there's not a lot of consensus about what the problems are with it or what to do about it. To understand this debate, it will help to dissect the bill. Here's the first critical passage. No provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. This gives websites the first of two key protections. One is immunity when one of their users posts something that might be offensive or harmful. In that case, the user is the one liable for the speech, not the internet company that hosted it. In other words, Twitter isn't liable for what people tweet. That's different from traditional media companies who can be sued over what they publish. The other key protection that Section 230 gives internet companies is the freedom to moderate the content that users upload. The freedom to moderate comes from this passage. Companies that operate in good faith have the power to restrict access to material that they consider to be objectionable, whether or not such material is constitutionally protected. So if they take down a post that's offensive or harmful, they won't be held liable for that either. It was written when the internet was really growing up and there were a lot of websites out there, there were a lot of startups, and it was kind of a free-for-all in terms of what the rules of the road were around who could say what and who would be liable if something bad happened related to internet content. In the 90s, internet service providers like Prodigy were developing interactive features for their platforms, like bulletin boards. But on one of these bulletin boards, a Prodigy user wrote a post that led to a lawsuit from an infamous brokerage firm called Stratton Oakmont. You may remember it from the Wolf of Wall Street movie where it was portrayed. They got involved in the Section 230 story because they sued someone who had posted something about them online. Stratton won its defamation suit, in part because Prodigy had moderated its content, which, in the court's view, made it a publisher. So the Stratton case created this dynamic where internet companies had kind of a perverse incentive. If they took down a piece of content because it was harmful, they could be sued for doing that. And so in a way, they had an incentive not to do anything, to just let people say uh, whatever they wanted, or they could just not allow any posts by users at all. And neither of those outcomes seemed very beneficial to consumers, and that's why Congress stepped in. Senator Ron Wyden co-authored the 1996 text and has said that Section 230 was written to relieve the burden on fledgling tech companies. We wanted small businesses to start out focusing on hiring engineers, developers, and designers rather than worrying about how they had to hire a team of lawyers. But since Section 230 was written, the reach and political importance of platforms has grown, and that's led to numerous calls to update the law. Republicans have challenged the legal protections that Section 230 grants and say that the law lets tech companies censor conservatives. Here's Senator Roger Wicker commenting on a range of content takedowns that occurred ahead of the 2020 election. These recent incidents are only the latest in a long trail of censorship and suppression of conservative voices on the internet. Reasonable observers are left to wonder whether big tech firms are obstructing the flow of information to benefit one political ideology or agenda. But platforms debate these claims. Let me be clear. We approach our work without political bias, full stop. To do otherwise would be contrary to both our business interests and our mission. If Republicans are concerned that internet companies are taking too many posts down, Democrats have the opposite concern. They're worried that internet companies are leaving too many posts up, in particular false information about elections or any other issue. So they really want to see these companies be a lot more active. Facebook is profiting off and amplifying disinformation that harms others because it's profitable. This isn't a speech issue. 
On the campaign trail, Joe Biden said that it's time to revoke how much protection tech platforms get. I, for one, think we should be considering taking away the exemption that they cannot be sued for knowingly engaged on in promoting something that's not true. Others, like Susan Ness, a former FCC commissioner, say that limiting the liability protections in Section 230 could chill free expression. To the extent one plays around with it too much or, or removes it, um, we, um, it will have a dramatic and negative impact on freedom of expression. Others question the assumption that tech companies are acting in good faith, especially when harmful content goes viral. Some lawmakers look at this issue and say, look, if an internet company takes a piece of content and processes it, puts it through an algorithm, promotes it, and helps it go viral, well, in that case, maybe the company should have more responsibility about whether that content was harmful. Others simply think the companies have too much leeway to decide what stays up and what comes down. One bill from Senate Republicans aims to strike the otherwise objectionable standard and replace it with narrower guidance on content that promotes self-harm, terrorism, or unlawful activity. Another area of focus is transparency. There is real mistrust among the American people about whether you're being fair or transparent. This is one area where tech executives say they agree. I hear the concerns and acknowledge them, but we want to we fix it with more transparency. You know, these companies really have come to a point where they've been under criticism for years, and they're realizing that saying, hey, just keep your hands off us isn't going to work. And so they are now advocating for some form of regulation that they can live with. All these solutions we're talking about are legislative, and it's hard to pass laws, particularly when Congress is divided. And that means the courts could be the first place where Section 230 changes. Justice Clarence Thomas issued a statement where he questioned whether the provision has been interpreted too broadly by the courts. And he was sort of inviting legal challenges to Section 230 and the way that it's been interpreted. With a review of Section 230 underway, the web that we know could morph into something fundamentally different.